Hi, my name is Colin Patterson. I'm here to do a little video today on the local market. What we're seeing today, um, interest rates, pros and cons of buying a home in 2022. I'm here to talk with my buddy Joe Eslight, who has um, been doing real estate for a few years now, owns his own brokerage, knows a lot about what's going on in the market. So how are you doing today, Joe? Hey, Colin, I'm doing well, man. Thanks for, for setting this up and uh, I'm excited to talk some real estate. Yeah, well, what, um, what are you seeing out there? I know you had a little, uh, little action this weekend. So what's it, what's it like in Rochester? Yeah, so this, uh, this past Saturday, I uh, had some new buyers that were starting to, to look in the market. They're in that $300,000 uh, price point. And uh, we made an offer on a house. There were four offers and we offered 15,000 over asking and didn't get it. Um, looks like maybe the other, the, the winner, maybe didn't have any inspection contingency. And so that kind of gives you a little, little um, uh, hint of what the market is like, even, even though it's like really cold outside in winter, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. pretty wild already. The three, the 300,000 point is, uh, it's brutal right now, I would say, wouldn't you? If, you, if you're, if you're living in Rochester and you're looking for um a house in that say 275 to 325 maybe 350 range you're going to run into quite a bit of competition aren't you yeah i mean nowadays 300,000 will get you you know a four four bedroom two bath uh split level home maybe 1800 to 2000 square feet and uh yeah that's that's kind of what you're getting for for 300,000 nowadays yeah um, I know a lot of people, I think, uh, are feeling a little bit of a sense of urgency right now just because they've watched interest rates go up here recently. Um, just a few months ago, we we're down, still down around three. And um, at last check today, it's almost 3.9. And so um, that really makes a difference when you're bumping up against the top of your price range. Uh, that can affect a payment as much as you know, 200 bucks a month if you're sitting right around that 380, 400,000 mark on a, on a house. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Where do you think interest rates are headed this year? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I don't think any of us know the exact answer. Uh, prior to the start of this year, from what some of the experts were saying is that they were expecting to see maybe like 3.7% for a 30-year mortgage uh, towards the end of 2022. And like you mentioned, it's almost, you know, 3.9% and we're just in the second month of the year. So that's, to me, that was pretty surprising and uh, kind of hard to say where it's going to be. I know I have some friends that are looking to build a house and, you know, when they were pre-approved at 3%, you know, for, for their build, uh, all the numbers made sense to them. But if it goes up to, you know, by the time the, the house is finished, if it goes up to 4% interest rate, 4.5, uh, who knows if they can make that work. So it'll, it'll just be interesting to see how, all the interest rates are gonna kind of affect that, uh, right? Purchase price, yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, I think it really uh, is important nowadays to shop the interest rate a little bit. I know everybody's kind of around the um, um, same. You know, you're not gonna see wide swings from one bank to another bank as far as what the interest rate is, but if you have a preferred lender, preferred bank what i've seen people do is um, if you get a little bit better rate from somebody else you can always send that over to the bank that you prefer to borrow from and see if they'd be willing to match it because um, when things are, are going up every little bit helps um, any other advice that you might have as far as um, someone who's in the market for a mortgage or things they can do to try to um, you know make sure that they get the best deal yeah, absolutely. And, and you're right. Uh, shopping around is important. But I think the most important thing is just get pre-approved, have something in writing, um, have a bank check all your, your income, your credits, uh, your debt, all those things so that if you do find a house that you want and you like and want to buy that you're ready to go. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to have maybe two pre-approvals from two different banks. You know, if, if there's multiple offers and all else is equal, and you're the only one with two, you know, two pre-approvals that might make the seller feel more comfortable that you're the best qualified because you have two banks that are pre, you know, that have pre-approved you. Right. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, I think, you know, working with professional, uh, professional realtor lender, having, you know, being with a, a lender that has good communication and that's really 
uh, has the time and ability to help you, especially in this market. Sometimes, you know, the seller wants to see that your pre-approval has the address of the house you're looking to buy so they can, so they feel good that uh, the lender reviewed the pre-approval with the house that you're making an offer on. So having a lender that has good communication, I think is, is very important. Have you heard anything or um, I've heard some different scenarios where sellers actually look at the lender and, um, you know, if somebody's pre-approved through this bank and another person's pre-approved through, you know, a certain other bank or credit, un credit union that maybe they give a little um, preference. Are there banks that are harder to get a pre-approval from or are there any that maybe the pre-approval carries a little more weight than than another lender yeah that's a good question i mean i think as long as uh the lender i mean if the lender's local or it's one of those you know national banks most sellers are going to be okay with um if it's a you know if it's a multiple um situation offer or you know um in that case i always like to if i if i if i'm able to as a as, the, as a realtor representing the seller i like to call the bank from the buyer side you know, and see if there's any concerns or any issues, especially if it's like, a, you know, if it's conventional loan, usually those are, um, they're, they're not as strict with like the appraisal, which is where maybe you can run into some challenges. But if it's like an FHA or some other loan where, you know, they might, they might be more strict, I always like to call the, the bank and, and see, if, you know, but I think uh, also there's other banks that are more of uh, online banks. And those are the ones where sellers don't recognize them or or even like the, the listing agent, the, the realtor representing the seller. If they've never seen them, then they want to do they want to uh, maybe do a little more due diligence. So if you if you want to work with an online bank, I've seen people do it and they offer good rates and service. But maybe it might be a good idea to have uh, an online pre-approval from an online lender and then maybe a local one, too. Right. In yeah. case. So. Um, that's what I would probably do or recommend. Great. That's uh, really good advice. Um, I think this is a good point to maybe segue into some pros and cons. I mean, their uh, interest rates are kind of a sticky situation and that can be, you know, potentially a con um, for, for purchasing a home. Although uh, I don't think that they're going down. So maybe, uh, you know, uh, it more importantly can be looked looked at as as a pro to um go ahead and maybe try to get in before they go up even further um what would you say are some maybe some pros and some some cons to purchasing a home we're just starting out in 2022 so maybe from now and and through the spring um some pros and cons of of purchasing a home this year yeah, great question. So, I mean, the pros right now would be, um, like you said, I don't think that interest rates are going to get any lower, uh, you know, and, and actually they're going to go up. How much? We don't know. So in theory, if you can find the, the house that meets all your needs, that's a good fit for you right now. I would say now's a good time to buy. Um, so that would be one of the pros. You also have a little bit less competition now than if you wait till like the spring or even summer. Uh, after match day here in Rochester, that's when a lot of sellers put their homes uh, for sale. Yeah. Uh, and then, so there's going to be, but then there's also more people looking, you know, right? A lot of people don't want to move in the winter time or when it's cold. And yeah. so uh, I would say that's one of the pros is taking advantage of the lower interest rates and less competition. Um, so, you know, now as, as a con would be, you know, since we don't know what interest rates are, let's say they do up going up to 4.55% between now and like, let's say summer or fall, which who knows, maybe, maybe not that happens. Uh, but if that does happen, maybe you'll see a little bit less competition, potentially prices kind of, you know, stabilize a little bit. Maybe you can get some closing costs if it's a house that, you know, has been on the market for some time. Yeah. So that could be one of the reasons why maybe it's better to wait, but I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's tough to predict. I always tell people, you know, if you find a house that, you know, uh, meets your goals, what you're looking for, if you're ready to buy, you have some money saved, or even if you don't, there's a lot of down payment options out there that can help you. So if you're ready to go and it, and it makes sense to you, you know, do it now. If you're not ready and then you're, there's some uncertainty and you're not sure, you know, maybe wait a little bit longer, but again, work with a professional lender, realtor that can guide you and, and, and keep you up to date and give you the, the best advice. Yep. I think that's really good advice. Um, you know, especially um, a lot of people think right now that, um, the, you know, the market is so hot that I can just throw my house on there and I, I'll get 
it'll sell really easily. And, you know, I can for sale by owner. And um, I think what what sometimes they don't think about is by doing that, you're losing out on potentially that second offer or third offer or fourth offer. What really is going to drive up the price of someone's home is a multiple offer situation. And so the only way really to get into that situation is to put your house on the MLS, put it on the open market, let the market dictate what that house is going to sell for. And that's how you're going to get the most money for it. Um, any other thoughts or anything else? Uh, any other advice you got um, while we have you here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the part that, you know, kind of makes things a little challenging to, to decide on is also, you know, you have inflation that's been pretty strong this last, you know, couple months, year. Um, so that's going to drive up the, the price of homes. So even if, if you decide to wait because you think in the future it's going to be better, uh, even if interest rates are lower, but home prices go up, then you're kind of missing out on, on kind of getting that into equity if you buy now. So um, yeah. it's, it, it's a tough time, but I think uh, there's still a lot of uh, positives with interest rates. Historically, they're still pretty low. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in Rochester, it's a pretty, pretty stable uh, city with having the Mayo Clinic. And, and so, you know, as far as, as, as long as you buy a house and, and don't plan to sell it like a year from now or two years, you know, yeah. try to keep it three to five years. You should be fine. Would you rather be a buyer or a seller right now? Uh, man, it depends. Uh, if I think ideally, if you were selling your home and you're gonna rent somewhere else, at least temporarily, I think that's the best case scenario. Because, um, you know, buying right now can be a little, a little challenging. But um, with with professional help, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Um, if somebody's looking for a little more information or where, where can they find you or, or what should somebody do if they uh, like this video and they want uh, more frequent updates on the market? Yeah. So um, I, by the way, Colin and I, we both work at Casa Real Estate. If you want more information, you can go to casaminnesota.com. And this website has a lot of information, a lot of resources, guides, whether you're looking to buy or sell a home. But we have one page specifically, which we will have the link on the video description that you can check out and learn uh, month to month and see, you know, what the market is doing uh, so you can stay on top of it. Now, if you ever have any questions, Colin and myself, we're always available. We're never too busy to help you guys, whether you're looking to buy or sell. So uh, just uh, let us know and we'll have that video link that you can check out as well. Yeah. Any uh, really easy questions you call me and any really hard questions you call Joe. Oh, that Does that good. sound sound good? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good, good plan, man. All right, Joe. Well, it's been great talking to you. We'll uh, see you here in the next couple of days, I'm sure. Sounds good, Colin. Thanks. All right. See ya.